to show you a journaling activity I did based on Matthew 6 about the birds. So I'm um, thinking of the birds and how they don't sow or reap and that God takes care of them and the wildflowers are so beautiful and some of them don't even get seen by people. That was a fantastic journaling prompt. It actually got me outside in nature just really trying to notice things like birds and flowers and just what's, what's going on in nature. and. It made me realise, you know, that beauty is so generous, like it doesn't matter on any given day, it's always changing and because I was trying to capture it on my phone or whatever, um, it made me realise that it's always there the next day, like it's just always giving and generous and um, and just so much speaks of um, the generosity of God to me anyway. This is part of the reason why I know that God is good, a, a good and benevolent God, despite so many things that are going on in our world. We think of the creation and how beautiful it is. This week I've got a couple of things to show you. I got a, um, a Monty Mart package with some Copic markers and I just tested them out in my art journal. I got a couple of um, art pads for specifically for markers and these are fantastic because I'm going on a road trip in a couple of months up to Exmouth which is far north of Perth. It's going to be fantastic and um, I'm just going to take a whole stash of things like that like markers and um, just a lot of drawing implements and drawing um, things with me so I, I showed you the process of that and I'm also going to just give you a look at, at what I used in the little demo that I do later in the video I used a really big art journal this is a3 size and when you open it up it's um, really large I did a large piece just one spread there um, it's only 110 GSM drawing cartridge paper which is quite thin it's not as thick as the watercolor or mixed media pads but because I do a lot of layering in this um, with paper and things like that it hasn't worried me it didn't really matter so that's, a, that's been really good, quite portable as well and I've got a runaway oil pastel here and I use a lot of oil pastels, even on my canvases I use oil pastels. I have got some cheap ones that I use but these are my favourite, they're the, um, by Mangigo which I think is Japanese, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, it's really good. I've already used heaps of them and I didn't get them that long ago, so they're very soft and buttery and they lay down really nice colour. Um, I do use like high flow acrylics sometimes. Um, I, I, I know that you can get a medium to turn your normal paints into high flow, but I don't use them often enough to sort of warrant that. So I've just got the ready-made ones and these are by Global and I love the Global colours. They are actually professional colours but they're a little bit more translucent and yeah so I use a lot of these as well. As well as um, I've got some Atelier Interactives and what else have I got? And I use um, Jo Sonia, so they're very much like gouache. So they're your uh, folk art dedicated paints, kind of. That's what a lot of folk artists use. Beautiful colours in this range, the Jo Sonia. And they're very matte as well. This one's a bit munted, but um, Matisse, the structure. And I've got some tubs of those as well, like uh, larger qu qu quantities. So I do have a lot of paints, and I just use all of them um, there are no rules apart from really oil paint obviously um, if you put oil paint underneath acrylics aren't going to go on top but if you put acrylic underneath you can put oil paint on top so every now and again once in a blue moon some I will um, crack out you know the oil paints but I find them quite messy so I tend to go with acrylics much easier to clean up and easier to transport for me anyway so my advice is to just use what you enjoy and um, experiment with that and have fun in the experimentation. I'm going to show you my beautiful Cop Copic markers and I'm going to have a look at the colours because I ordered them online and 
don't know really what the colors are going to turn out like so a bit excited to see show you my the stash that I've already got and I've got a couple of these pads um, and the paper oh the paper's lovely it's really thick and kind of shiny I didn't realize um, they made pads like this that are specifically for um, markers so yeah I just discovered this is one I showed on my channel a while ago I've used page on it as well but yeah they're just really thick paper and um, I had no idea that I, I just really I love them they mean it means that you know you don't get that problem of like paper um, your markers bleeding to the other side and I ordered two which um, I'm anyway I thought I ordered one I'm glad I ordered two so I'm gonna have a look at my colors I'm gonna get my old ones just to compare okay so this is my little stash of colors that I already have some of them are like um, just Monty Mart ones that are quite cheap. I've got some Copic markers, some that I have used a lot, a lot that are nearly. I just love these. You know why? These are um, the Copic C I A O K. -K I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not even going to try. Anyway, um, they've got the brush bit at the end, and I just I love that. It's so nice. So you can get probably hold it better show you the brush that is the brush and they just make such a nice mark I just love them and I just have a little motley crew of like really quite cheap ones these are called watercolor mark markers by Monty Mark and they're quite nice I've got a nice little nib you can see there. I'm just finding I always need more colors so you can see my little band of colors the sort of things I'm going to take with me. I'm going away to Exmouth, which is north of um, Perth, a long way north of Perth, to, um, to stay with my sister. She's got a house there, a little holiday house, so I'm going to take these. So much fun. I like how that's pale. That'll be like really good for sort of, I don't know, flowers. I find sometimes with markers they can be the colors can be too bold you know what I mean this one looks like a brighter color yeah, but it's not it's quite gentle wow that looks like a baby's room <laughs> baby pink and baby blue I like that as well I think I'm just gonna like them all I'm gonna just go on saying I like that I like that bet you this is pale look at this color it's very kind of looks very pale this color um, I I love it in paint I actually need to get more of this color in paint because it's kind of my go-to green that I use yeah, I kind of got all the pale colors. I felt like I had to get a brown because browns are just wonderful.
see what this purpley is. Very nice for layering. They, they are very pale. I'm not sure if I'm disappointed with this one actually. It's very pale. What's it called? It's a. I think if I tried this in the shop, I'd um, I'd be wanting something a little bit more, you know, brighter. I've got, I've got another purple, but it's like right at the other end. Like, see how dark that is. I suppose it layers quite nicely. I'm not liking this at all, this drawing, but anyway. <laughs> I'm just um, playing around at the moment and the blue is really pale, which is odd because this one is another blue that I had before and it's so dark, whereas when you look at it like that, you would think that you would think that, that one would be a lot lighter, right? Again. Well, that's the other side. I wonder if it's just the brush that. That's funny. Oh no. No, that's layering up. Okay. Alrighty. Let us keep going. So I've got. I've tried all of those. I actually really like that brown. That's actually lovely. Um, so this is the, what's it called? Can't find it, raw silk. I did well to read that without glasses. My eyes are a bit dodgy. Raw silk, that'd be nice for um, skin tones too. Let's see what it's like, we're gonna layer it over something. And we have, I probably should have um, told you the names of all of them. This one is Light Hydrangea. I love hydrangeas. This one is, where are you? Sky, of course. And they're my older ones. And this one is yellow green. That's um, nice and simple. Yes, I love my yellow greens. Probably for years that's been like a standard color that I like to work with. So that's very pale. It probably doesn't even show up on the video because everything gets bleached out when you film things. It's always the problem when you're taking photos of artwork as well. Things get bleached out and the colors don't um, turn out the way you sort of think. So that's not bad. Probably, yeah, I'm sort of a bit met over that one as well. That's okay. So what happens when you buy things online? I need to make actually a trip to the real world sometimes. And that one's very pale. Yeah, I think I just wanted all the pale ones for some reason. That's okay. I don't even think that would really show up because I've got so many bolder ones. So what I was hoping for is something more like this. So that's just a little bit, a little bit darker. But probably, you know, if I was doing more subtle things, it would be okay. Probably good actually um, if I'm utilizing white because sometimes an off-white is really good. So this would. This is almost like an off-white. All right, so that's my my Copic markers.
So I'm going to show you a journaling activity I did based on a prompt from Matthew, Jesus' words in Matthew. And this is the message translation, which is so lovely. And it says, Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than birds. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen. Don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do the best for you? What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to what God is giving. So beautiful and so wonderful to remember and I really wanted to capture that um, kind of whimsical quality of birds and the fact, I mean just the fact that they fly, um, they're so free, even in, just in that aspect. And so I looked into some folk art idea just for ideas for patterns and designs and things. And that was really helpful and I actually learnt a lot um, during this process. So I'm just, um, I've laid down some paper and I'm going in with some oil pastel to lay down some shapes. I get, as always, when I do my process, it looks really messy and then I, um, I pull back different areas and, and leave the details that I want um, through it. So I was, it's all, always really interesting one of my friends said once that she loves mixed media and texture just because it reminds her of what life is like like there's always um you know layers underneath and then you overlay over the top and um you change things around and um so it sort of weaves this this story within all the layers so i love that that idea it's just really lovely So I remember feeling a bit like a bit lost here, not really know, knowing what colours to use or where I was going and um, just kind of layering and layering and layering, getting a little bit lost. Um, so I later on you'll see I end up painting over it, but at the moment I'm still persevering. And it's just really, um, I think what I mentioned earlier about giving yourself permission to or being lighthearted about our failures because really that's anything that we do that we learn um, is built on things that we got wrong and we learn from our mistakes and things that we're not happy with and um, when when I changed it completely it was just like this weight lifted and all of a sudden I was um, yeah I just felt so much freer because I gave myself permission to paint over it as I'm doing here I actually turned the page upside down yeah um, and that was really really good and just sketched in um, a new design and it, it felt I was so much happier with the shape one thing I, I learned from this whole activity because I sort of took to looking at birds a lot more and just nature in general and it just made me really appreciate how generous beauty is that it doesn't run out that if we put ourselves in a position to notice it there's always something there that we can see that's really amazing and beautiful so 
so once again I've got my glue out and just some um, these are actually really lovely um, scrapbooking papers that I've got and I'm just laying out some colors here just showing my, you my palette that's got um, a bit of magenta and um, a couple of the global colors the blue is one of the global colors so just a really simple palette and um, getting some getting some sort of more vibrant colors in there now because I've laid a few sort of more muddy colors and textures This is um, always the part where it looks too, too busy and I'm very aware that it's more busy than what it's going to be and um, again I'm changing colours <laughs> so it's I always pull it back like I'll just pull back the things that I'm, I'm not happy with and um, make it look more simple. I don't know why um, at the moment that sort of seems to be how I'm working. I think that probably says something about how my brain works <laughs> i've got to sort of pare things back and um, get things into di digestible elements um, I kind of always go full you know all or nothing at the start I really enjoy doing this last little bit where I put in like the little details and with folk art um, it's lovely they've got so many lovely patterns and whimsical sort of flowers and arrangements and um, there was such Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this inspiring and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening and God bless.